Hey class, Dr. Petty here. We are going to be covering Topic 2 Project out of Word. And in this project, we're going to be learning how to use the features in Word that enable us to format an essay or a paper relatively quickly with adding sources and everything else. Now, I realize that Google Docs has some of these features, but Word really has many more features than what is available in Google Docs at the moment. And this is a very powerful tool, so please pay attention because some of the, thing, the things that you learn in this uh, lesson may actually help you with your next assignment. So let's take a look um, at what we're gonna do here. So I'm starting with the instructions and uh, I'm going to just uh, read here from the steps and we'll get started. Okay, so um, the very first thing we wanna do is we got to rename our file because the program requires a file name that's very specific. And you can notice up here this Sean Petty underscore one. We want to go ahead and just change this to a Sean Petty underscore two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do a save as. As you saw me click earlier, I'm going to change this one to a two, and. Um, I'll go ahead and just save. It's going to save in my downloads folder. That's where I saved it. I, you know, just recommend if if you get confused, maybe save it in a different folder, such as your uh, desktop folder or something else. But just as long as you know where to navigate to get it, that's fine. But the important thing is is that I didn't uh, change anything else except for that one and that two. All right, so let's get into the project. Project steps. You are writing a research paper for your media and communications course. The paper summarizes trends in streaming video services and must be written in the MLA style. Change the citations and bibliography style of the document to MLA. All right, so you might be wondering, you know, wh why MLA, why APA, why Chicago? Well, whenever we're doing research, it's really important that the type of research we're doing, what is relevant. For example, in APA format, what is relevant is the year and the author because it's possible that one scientist, for example, could do many works over his tenure as a professor or something like that. And in those works, he may change his position. And so if folks are doing scientific research, they need to use the most current uh, works, uh, unless they're using like a model or something like that, or like primary research, but it's very important. Now, when we're dealing with like MLA, it's really important that we know who the source is the work that they're working on, and the year that we're quoting it from. Not for the same purposes of scientific research, but to give gravitas or to make sure that we're using a source that's been vetted and has portrayed a historic or English-based or literature-based um, you know, piece of work accurately. So, so what we're going to do to do this step, I'm going to come over here to References. And then from references, you can see here in this references in our ribbon, we have table of contents, footnotes, research, citations of bibliography. We're gonna be working a lot right here. Um, we're gonna do a lot. We're not gonna to focus too much on this stuff. Not for this class, however, these are some amazing tools, but not for this class. So here, what we're going to do is I'm gonna come over here to where it says citations of bibliography, <laughs> sorry. And I'm gonna go style, and we're gonna to go to MLA. Okay, so just like that, it updates the format of this document to MLA, um, which means that the different text, the way we do sources, what information is required in a source is also going to update. As you can see here, I can go through and, and there's several different formats for writing, um, each of them having their own nuances and with regard to how it should appear on paper and the type of information they want. But you get the gist. So we're going to change this to MLA right here, and we did. And uh, we're going to go to the second step, which is modify the first body paragraph, the rising popularity satellite subscription services. Okay, so that's this. It says modify the first body paragraph um, by changing its font to Times New Roman and the font size to 12 point and the line spacing to double with no blank spaces after the pair after paragraphs okay so what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and just select this now if you're ever confused about what a paragraph is in word i'm going to come over here to the home tab and i'm going to oops made my tab disappear if this ever happens to you and you accidentally click on it and make it disappear you can just double click make it go away double click make it come back uh it, that's that simple and double click on any of the tabs here 
But what I wanted to show you is his non-printable formatting marks. Now, if I turn these off or on, you'll see that these little widgets or marks appear, but these are actually telling me something. Each one of these notes, uh, a type of formatting that's been applied. So anytime that you see that there here is this backwards looking P, that's actually called a carriage return or a new paragraph. This tells me that this is one, two, three, four paragraph or four carriage returns in. Now the reason I'm telling you that is in your assignments, you may be asked to go to the fourth paragraph of the document, which may be this up here, but the body paragraphs are down here. So if you see body paragraphs, those are over here, over here, and then these are titles and we're excited. So um, yeah, so we're here in this first paragraph. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off to make it look cleaner. I'm gonna select this paragraph and let's go ahead and modify it. So it says here, modify the first body paragraph by changing its font to Times New Roman. So I'm gonna come over here and select Times New Roman. Now it's down here a bit. I don't wanna search for that. So I'm just gonna type it in here and then press enter once it pops up. So I started typing Times New Roman and auto populated. Once I press enter, you can see here how that changed the text here to uh, Times New Roman. And if I come up over here where these uh, A's are, you'll see this is lowercase, this is uppercase. Oh, sorry, this is a bigger font, lower, uh, smaller font. This is uppercase, lowercase. But here I'm gonna just bump this up to 12. And you can see here we have uh, our 12 point font and it looks like we're ready to go for this step. Oh, we did not uh, address the line spacing. So it says we also want the line spacing to be double with no blank spaces after paragraphs. So again, we have our, we have our uh, paragraph selected. If I come over here, I can come over here and, and then click this icon and you can see there's remove space after paragraph, add space before paragraph. But what I wanna do first before this gets real messy is I'm just gonna set the line spacing to double. Now, a way I wanna show you to do this is it's actually cleaner to come over here and click this menu to get the paragraph main menu to kind of come up. It lets me see things a little bit clearer. So I can see here the spacing after is at eight. Spacing before by default is zero, but I'm gonna change this to zero. I'm gonna change the line spacing here to double. This is only gonna to apply to the paragraph, not the entire document. So I'm gonna click okay, and there we go. So we have our first paragraph kind of formatted there. Now it says step number three, update the normal style to reflect the changes made to the first body paragraph. Okay, so what are these styles? Now, we talked about this in class a little bit, but these styles are really here to help you format a document quickly. Think of them as each one being a formatting button that you can program, and they're very easy to do so. You know, notice if I hover over them and I have a paragraph selected, how it changes the format based on whatever's programmed in each one of these buttons. So this one, as you can see, is programmed at Calibri font, and it's just not what we want. So what I wanna do is I wanna right click this because we wanna modify this. I'm gonna say modify and the normal name. Okay, so that's fine. You can actually create your own buttons. If you wanted to make a, you know, a whole set of buttons that you can name and have them do whatever you want, you can. Now there's gonna be some menus in here because we're making a button. Now the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set this to 12. And we're gonna to try to reflect the changes that were made up in this paragraph. Because let's say I, I made all those changes here and I don't wanna keep doing this over and over again. So we're gonna go Times New Roman. Now here's a little bit more tricky. Uh, there's a little sub button buried down here in the bottom left corner of this menu. And if I click it, I'll see they have all these other options. So you're adjusting paragraph formatting. So click on this. Um, these other options we'll talk about in a later time, but for now, just be here. Now again, we're gonna set this to zero, just like the first step, and we're gonna set the line spacing to double. Now this is going to change anything that I have associated with the normal style. Now you can see it kind of rapidly updated the document here. That's because all of these were body paragraphs and we're um, indicated by the program to be the normal style.
Okay, so it says apply the updated normal style to the first four paragraphs in the document. So remember when I told you earlier that paragraphs aren't always four to seven sentences? Well, according to Word, it's a technical term for any time you hit the carriage return. So the four, first four paragraphs are right here. Now, if I select them, all I have to do is hover over the normal style and left click it. And there you go. It has updated that and we didn't need to go and change all that formatting. Okay, so step number five says insert a right aligned header with a Sanchez or with Sanchez as the header text followed by a plain page number and then close the header and footer. Okay, so header and footers are pretty simple. Just double click at the top of your document and you're gonna come into the header and footer submenu. Now by default, when it turns on, this is going to be in the insertion point is gonna be in the left side, but we want it on the right. So what I'm going to do is press Control R now, I could come over here and do this, but then I'd have to go back to the other menu. I, I like to use my, my hotkeys. They work so much faster. So in here, what I'm going to do, we're going to type Sanchez. Now, I'm going to do a space here because uh, we're going to do a, a current position number. I want this number to populate across all of these pages. And as you can see in my, my header here, that is happening. I, I see my, the, the name in each of the pages. But what I want to do is I want to come over here where this says uh, either page number. And I want to look for current position. And then I'm just going to select plain number. And what that's going to do is that's going to plop that page number right next to wherever I have the insertion point. And you're going to see it's going to start counting from there. As it, as you can see here. Now if I want to get out of this, there's two ways. I can click this button here or I could just double click down here and it'll, it'll close it. So either way is fine. Okay, so step number six says create a first line indent of 0.5 inches for all the body paragraphs beginning with the rising popularity and ending with keep cutting the cord. All right, so you see we have all these paragraphs here. Let's say you come across an essay and it's not formatted. So we're gonna select all this. Now you might wonder what I just did there. I've left click right here to put the insertion point here. And I see some people do this with the mouse, which that's fine if it's like a paragraph or something. But if you're dealing with 30 pages you have to select, it's much easier to do this. Scroll down to where you need to go, hold down the shift key, and then just left click where you want to select. And then you can select an entire document. Uh, you can surgically select parts of a document. It's a great way to do it. Okay, so I have this selected. Now notice up here I have this little ruler tool that you may not see. Uh, by default, sometimes when you open Office, it's turned off. I'm going to toggle this off and on for you, if you will. And in here you'll see there's this little hourglass symbol with a box underneath it. Well, these are actually indentations. Um, if I were to left click and hold this, and this is only visible if you have this ruler button checked over here, but if I were to drag this and bring this over, you can see that this is my first line indent, this is my hanging, and this is all indentations together. The difference is if I were to grab this one, this box, you can see how it actually moves over all the indentation. I don't want to do that. Uh, also, if I get back there, yeah, let's, we're going to control Z. There we go. So we'll start from scratch again. You see, this is called a hanging indent, and you'll see this in citations. Um, I don't want to use this one either. But let's say if I wanted to do this without using those types of tools, I could come over here to paragraph, open this up here. As long as I have this selected, I can come over to special, first line and then click OK. And you can see it graphically moved this over. So either way you do this, it doesn't really matter, just so as long as that you have an indentation here. Now, indentations only occur where there's a carriage return. So if you just wrote a continuous paragraph and then use spacebar to do your, um, you know, move lines over and things, it won't work for you. Okay, so uh, step number seven says, on page two, before the period in the sentence, in addition, technology companies, all right, so let's go to page two. And so we're searching for this here. 
So here's our sentence, in addition, technology companies. All right, so what we wanna do is we're gonna come over here to this period. Now, let's say we wanna drop, drop a source in here. Um, Word has probably one of the most powerful citation tools that a word processing program can have. Now, there are many others out there uh, that have been used on the market. Um, a lot of folks have, have talked to me about various programs that work that they can kind of integrate or they can put a, a, a button in a word or there's a, you know, if you will, an add-on or something or an extension. But Word really has all this built in. You don't really need that. So if you put, click right here, what we're going to do is we're going to add a source. And I'm reading this directly from the instructions. And I'm going to go ahead and add this. So to do this, I'm going to go to References, Manage Sources. Now, I, you can see I have a whole bunch of sources here. This is from a dissertation, as you can see how big this library can get. Um, but we're going to add a new one here. And we're going to call this one, or well, first we need to figure out what the medium is. So the medium is a website. The author is Hart Dan. The name of the web name of the web page is Tech Goes Hollywood. Now make sure you get the casing on these correct and make sure there are no extra spaces after anything you type. Otherwise it will count the extra spaces as characters and mark you wrong. Uh, we're gonna use 2020 as the year, July as the month, the day is the ninth, year access is 2021. Month access is January. The day accessed is uh, the 30th and the medium is a website. Okay, so depending on what source you're using or what style you're using, I'm sorry, the amount of information you'll have to reply to get, uh, apply is gonna change. Okay, so once you put this in, however, this source is always here and you never have to do that again. And you get this really convenient bibliography that you get to use at the end of the document. So we've got our source here. I'm going to click close. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and click insert citation. And I'm going to go ahead and insert that new citation that I just created right here. Okay, so step number eight says insert a citation to the existing Pew Research source before the period at the end of the sentence, a common complaint from customers. All right, so let's find that sentence. So here it is right here, a common complaint from customers. And we're going to go to the end of this sentence. So let's say we already have a citation and I don't need to create a new one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to insert citation. And this is gonna show me all the list of the sources I've already created. And here's Pew Research Center, so I'm gonna cite this right here. Very easy way to cite, and it's very accurate. Okay, so next step, step number nine, says in the same paragraph, before the end, before the period at the end of the, at the end of the sentence, furthermore. So we're looking for the end of the sentence furthermore. And we found it right here. So um, yeah, so we found our sentence. So at the end of this, we are going to insert an another citation. But it looks like I made an error here. So it looks like I accidentally put this Pew Research uh, site in the wrong place. So what do we do if we do that? Um, it's very easy to remove a citation. All I'm going to do is left click this and um, what I'm going to do is convert this citation to static, te static text. I made a mistake and I need to get rid of this. I'm going to convert this to static text and this is going to allow me to just delete the, 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 the words there. And now I'm going to come over here and then click in between this one. So I need to fix that citation. So I'm going to come back over here to Pew Research Center. I'm going to put this here. And now down here, we're going to provide another citation uh, to fix this one. So we're going to just plop our insertion point between the T and the period. And we're going to do a new source. This time, I'm going to click Insert Citation. 
and I'm going to click add new source. The difference is, is this is going to add the source and also cite at the same time. So we're going to say park J. Now we need to make sure that this says article in a periodical. Uh, the media divide. Down below, we're going to say news in tech. Year is 2020. The month is December. The day is the 4th. Uh, the pages are number 12. And the medium is print. OK, so as you see, I have all my information in here. When I click OK, see, it just dropped that in there for me. It made that uh, really easy to kind of cite. Okay, so the next step here is we're going to be inserting a manual page, page break so that the works cited paragraph begins on a new page. So I see this a lot of time in Word where people want to get something on a new page and they just hit the return key until it goes down there and they're like, oh, great, and they're like, I'm on a new page. But not really, you're not really on a new page. What you've done is you've carried this page over into this one. So any edits you make up here are gonna force this one downwards. So as you can see, if I keep hitting enter, it moves my work cited down. Well, I don't want that. And I can see that how many times I hit enter by just getting rid of this. Okay, so what I want is I want to get a page break in here that allows me to free up this page. And I'm just undoing all this just to make sure I'm in the right place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to insert and there's cover page, blank page, but what I'm going to do is page break. Oops. Page break. Now see when I have my formatting marks turned on, you can see where it says page break. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off for a moment just so you can see how this works. Now notice if I were to hit the enter key here now, as long as I do it before the page break, <laughs> you can see it doesn't adjust my work cited. Okay, um, so we've got our page break in there and then we're gonna go to step number 11 it says, in the blank paragraph at the end of the document, use the insert bibliography command to insert a list of sources without a built-in heading. Uh, for you Mac users, you're not gonna be able to do this. You're gonna have to just select bibliography and then delete the heading manually. Um, but uh, yeah, for us Windows users, so let me go ahead and turn on my formatting marks again so I can see that blank paragraph. Again, you can just toggle this on and off to see that blank paragraph. And I think there's actually, if you hover over these, you can see there's a hotkey. It's telling you control plus the asterisk will turn that on and off for you, which should be yeah, right there. And anyways, so I'm gonna go ahead and from here, what we're gonna do is we'll turn this off. I'm gonna go to re references. And I'm going to go to bibliography and I'm just going to hover down to insert bibliography. And just like that, we have our bibliography, which is properly formatted for MLA style. There are no things that we have to correct on this in terms of styling. Now, we may have to edit information, but the styling is correct. Oh, but there is one step on step 12 where we actually do edit the information. So edit the Elwood source to enter Alicia as the author's first name. OK, so this is a field now. Um, if you've noticed, once you have this in here, you can't really type into this and have it stay. So this is a field and it's fed by this thing that you've built up here. So if you want to correct this, the way to do this is we're going to go to manage sources and we're going to find that source. So the Elwood source is what we're looking at. So there it is. I'm going to click edit and we're going to come over here and make an edit and we're going to change Alicia. to the first name. I'm going to click close. Now, down here you'll notice it didn't really update it, right? It still says the wrong source. It still says Amy. So all I need to do is right click, update field. That's it. Right click, update field. And then as soon as I do that, Elwood Alicia appears. And there you have it. A properly MLA formatted document. And if you learn how to use these tools, you could take any document like this and do this in a matter of minutes and save yourself hours of time trying to get it done. All right, so the last step is to just go ahead and submit the assignment. 
this that's it for this video and thank you for watching take care